Take it away. So I'm going to talk about equine polysaccharide storage mapping. Um, it's also known as EPSM, and it is an inherited glycogen storage disease that causes exertional rhabdomyolysis, which is more frequently known as tying up. And basically, the muscles of the horse are unable to properly store glucose. It's typically associated with heavy breeds and quarter horses. Okay, and before you go on, this is a great topic. And what's another name for this? You said tying up. What's an older name? Anybody know another name for this? I think, I, I, and you'll have to tell me if I'm right, but this exertional thing, yes. It used to be called Monday morning disease. Did you run into yeah, that? I think I've heard that. Yeah, yeah, it probably isn't as common now because it used to happen in horses when, way back before tractors, they would rest on the weekend or Sunday and then they would get out there Monday morning and then tie up. Yeah, and I chose to present on this topic because I'm an intern on horse farm and we have a horse with this condition and I didn't really know a lot about it, so I just wanted to learn more. Excellent reason. Um, there are multiple subtypes. Uh, type 1 is caused by an autosome dominant genetic mutation known as GSY1. Uh, this mutation causes an upregulation of glycogen synthase and high levels of glycogen synthase relative to the glycogen raising enzyme. Uh, the mutation is associated with altered glucose metabolism but normal glycogen metabolism, as well as accumulation of high levels of glycogen and abnormal polysaccharide in the muscles of the horse. Um, some horses have shown to have insulin sensitivity, which improves glucose uptake by muscle cells and contributes to excessive glycogen storage that is already elevated and secondary to the GSY1 mutation. And for type 2, uh, it's a category for disorders that lead to abnormal deposition of glycogen in skeletal muscles, but it's not due to the GSY1 mutation, and they have not determined the cause yet. Okay, so if we summarize this, for both cases, it ends up being their muscles store too much glycogen. Is that true then? Yes. Okay, because then, you know, glycogen is the storage form of glucose, so it's like one step away from making glucose, but these horses are storing too much glycogen right. in their muscle. Um, so the breeds that are typically associated with this are quarter horses and their related breeds, so like paints and appaloosas, and then draft horses, specifically Percherons and Belgians, like the horse in the picture, and warm bloods. And then give me an example of a warm blood, because I know the draft horses are cold blooded, the race horses are hot blooded. What's a warm blood? Is that also a quarter horse or any of those? It's basically like a thoroughbred mixed with a draft type horse. Oh, okay, if you're mixing. Basically like a, like a hotter type horse with a draft horse. Okay, okay. And so um, some symptoms the horse is typically normal at rest, but the symptoms of tying up show up during light work, and those include short strides, stiffness, sweating, pain, and reluctance to exercise. Um, it also includes gait abnormalities, shifting lameness, muscle weakness, colored like pain, and elevated creatine kinase levels at rest. Um, to diagnose the two types, uh, type one, that you have to do a genetic test that requires a blood or hair sample, and it's less invasive than the type two, which requires a muscle biopsy. And then uh, management of the disease. Um, the horses should typically be on a low starch, high fat diet, and you should limit their access to fresh grass. So the horse on um, the farm that I work at typically is only on grass for about four hours a day. Um, you can also give them vitamin E and selenium supplements. And if they haven't been worked for a while, you want to increase their exercise slowly over time, and then avoid them being on star race, have them turned out as much as possible. And their work should be done in short bouts at maximum level, so you don't want to ride them for long periods of time or work them for long periods of time. Do it in short amounts of time, but every day pretty much. Like the horse on a farm needs to be ridden about six days a week for short periods of time. Okay, questions about tying up? I mean, it's interesting, uh, too much glucose, and I can't remember, then it, does it cause, uh, did you read about <clears throat> Does it cause like acidosis, or I can't remember the metabolic uh, consequences of it? I think there is a little bit about that, but I didn't get Yeah, this. yeah, and I, it's, I'm a little rusty on it, but I know it used to be much more prevalent, even if it wasn't a genetic thing, because they would typically work the horses six days a week, nothing on Sunday, and then Monday morning, bam, and some of the horses would tie up out in the field, and you couldn't move them. Literally, you could not move them, and in fact, <coughs> if they tie up, you shouldn't try to move them because you can cause muscle damage. So that's kind of neat that you know of a horse that has this. And did you say it was genetic or 
for that um, horse? Type one, yeah, for this horse. Right? For this horse, it was type one, yeah. So it'd be interesting then, uh, if you know we have a horse that ties up, then you shouldn't probably use it as a breeding horse, right? Right, I would think not, especially if you know it's a genetic type. Yeah. Um, is it helpful to give them the painkillers or something? Um, I would say maybe only like after, like the couple days after they tie up. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what they do. But then they still, once they can move, then they'll move them. But I think they give them some painkiller right away, but maybe somebody else knows. So do you just like wait until they can move again? Or like is there something you can do? Um, I actually, I haven't actually seen this horse tie up. Like all the episodes happened before I came, but you need to contact the vet. Because like he said, if you move them, um, yeah. you can I, I don't know exactly what they do. I think, first of all, you don't move them. Yeah. You know, no matter where you are, don't force them to move because you're actually going to cause some muscle damage. So I think they give them some muscle relaxants, or I don't know the whole protocol. But then I think sooner or later you can move them back to the stall. But you got to, obviously they know that horse, so they manage it right. But what's interesting is high fat diet kind of struck me because horses never see fat. It'd be interesting what they call a high fat. Do you know what percent? I don't actually. Okay, because you know horses really never see fat. What's an evidence that they never see fat? What do they lack that shows in their history they never see fat? Boy, this is. I'm going to charge everybody extra tuition after the day. <laughs> you know, somebody's going to have to take these testicles home and fry them up and bring them to us. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Do you know what? <laughs> they don't have a gallbladder. Horses don't have a gallbladder. That says in their whole history, they don't see much fat because they don't need, they make bile, but they don't store it. So like if they have a fatty meal like a dog, then they get a, get a lot of bile. So you know what happened, you know, maybe it's relatively high fat diet because horses really can't handle a lot of fat because they don't have a gallbladder. So rather interesting. Okay, let's give everybody a